a medical student will often be tempted to jump on to clinical examination just after listening to the presenting complaints. But one should refrain from that. The importance of clinical history can never be underestimated. So clinical history taking in details should not be neglected because a logically taken history will enable you to form a list of probable disorders that may be causing the symptoms. So even before you proceed on to the examination, you will have a list of probable diagnoses in your mind. So while you go for clinical examination, the history knowledge will guide you to look specially for signs which may confirm the presence of the probable diagnosis that came into your mind or rule out. So you will not miss the signs. Second, it will guide you to order specific investigations and to study the results of these investigations so as not to miss any clinic critical finding which may clinch the diagnosis because as it is often said, eyes don't see what the mind doesn't know. So mind would know only after a logically and detailed clinical history is taken. And therefore, history taking is a skill that combines social skills because some of the questions that you are asking may be sensitive ones. And it, it is a combination of social skill with scientific knowledge. And therefore, this skill constantly gets refined with increasing the clinical experience and medical knowledge. So for the beginners, it is important that they follow some standard format for history taking so as not to miss important points in the history because some information which may be critical in clinching the diagnosis may be missed. One such format is available on the blogs on the website ihatepsm.com. The first step in clinical history taking is recording the socio-demographic data, each of which may give crucial clue towards the diagnosis. The first is the name of the patient. The name itself may give a clue to the country of origin or state of origin, the religion and each of these may increase or decrease the probability of certain diagnosis. For example, if a person appears to be from a state that is endemic for Kalazar, the chronic fever is more likely because of Kalazar. Whereas if the patient is from a malaria endemic area, then the fever may be explained by malaria. Next is the age of the patient. The probability of various disorders, they change with the age at presentation of symptoms. For example, Congenital origin, congenital origin diseases are most likely to present in very young children. Infections, vaccine preventable diseases, nutritional deficiencies, they tend to present in older children or even in youth. Whereas degenerative diseases and neoplasms, the probability increases with increasing age. For example, a chronic cough may indicate COPD in a middle age smoker. Whereas the first possibility that comes to the mind would be carcinoma if the patient is 65 years old or older. Gender. Males are known to be more prone to certain disorders like coronary heart disease, X-linked disorders, etc. On the other hand, women are more prone to iron deficiency anemia, autoimmune disorders, thyroid disorders, etc. Some diseases like hyperplasia of prostate, ectopic pregnancy are possible only in one of the genders. In addition, one may, be, one may need to be sure that the person is not pregnant to rule out certain disorders or before considering certain treatments. Sometimes the pregnancy itself may explain the symptoms also. Then religion. Religious practices. Marital status. Similar complaints in the spouse may increase the possible probability that the disorder has an origin in the family practice, some practice in the family itself. Certain anxiety disorders may be associated with marital status. In addition, the marital status has a bearing on the plan of treatment. 
the next is the address again some diseases may be more common in certain areas as we have discussed before for example in urban residents raises the probability of stress related illnesses like ischemic heart disease diabetes mellitus hypertension on the other hand fluorosis goiter may be more likely in patient from the endemic areas then occupation very important certain occupations they increase the risk of certain disorders like sedentary work is associated with cardiovascular diseases working in higher temperatures for example in mines may affect the fertility in males and occupation in addition also gives information regarding the socio economic status of the patient like the address and finally who is giving you the information who is the informant the person who is giving you the information how reliable he is usually the patient himself provides the information is most reliable in case of children it is the mother which is usually the most reliable informant the presenting complaint or the chief complaints are the symptoms for which the patient has reported to the health system or to the physician while recording the chief complaints or presenting complaints it has to be noted that they have to be recorded in patient's own words followed by the duration and that if there are more than one symptom they have to be recorded in chronological order of their appearance the symptom which came earliest would be recorded first followed by its duration and then the symptom which came next would be the second and so on so the presenting complaints look like a list of symptoms each followed by its duration for example a patient came with fever for last 10 days cough for one week and difficulty in breathing for last 4 days history of presenting complaint is the main part of the history and you must spend some time discussing this with the patient so a chronology of the illness has to be determined so it is best begun by asking when were you last well and allow the patient to speak out the description of the first symptom from the beginning till the present and how other symptoms came up and how have they progressed till the present time of presentation be careful not to put any leading questions allow him to speak in his own words and it should be recorded also in the patient's language do not use any medical jargon because asking any leading questions will twist the history and may ultimately land you with a wrong diagnosis which may take you elsewhere the symptom each symptom needs to be elaborated in terms of its location its quality its mode of onset whether it was acute subacute or it came in gradually or any event which preceded the symptoms appearance whether it is localized diffused or radiating some place has it increased since its onset or decreased or continuous or it comes in intermittently what are the modifying factors if the patient has taken any treatment for it and what has been the response for this hence the questions that need to be asked for each symptom would depend upon the symptom itself so the various aspects to be asked for common presenting symptoms have been listed somewhere else this is followed by other associated symptoms as the patient is elaborating the presenting complaints various diagnoses will come to your mind at this point you can ask direct questions which can establish or rule out these diagnoses so inquire about presence of symptoms which are suggestive of the disorders whose possibility is coming to your mind here a negative answer would be as important as a positive answer and the questions are usually direct and need usually need a yes or no for the answer and sometimes this is known as taking negative history for example 
a patient with the presenting complaints of chest pain for last three months. A direct question, does the pain start on physical exertion? Does the period of rest relieve the pain? Does the pain increase on coughing and others? A positive answer to the first two questions would suggest angina, whereas a negative answer would rule out the possibility. Then a review of all systems. Because in the beginning, you may not be able to think of all the diagnoses as your knowledge is still to increase. So for the sake of not missing out any information, a review of all the systems may be done at this stage by asking about symptoms relating to all the systems. A table is of such a question has been given at the end of this lecture, which can be used for assessing all the systems and not to miss any information in the presenting complaint history. Remember The past medical history can give you vital clues regarding the current medical condition. It may help you in making the current diagnosis. In addition, it will give you information regarding the patient's health seeking behavior and his compliance with the treatment given. So accordingly, you can explain the treatment to him. For example, a patient with arthritis with a past history of gonorrhea or urethral discharge may make you think that the person has gonococcal arthritis currently and you may give order the investigation for confirming the same another example is a past history of similar headache on one side will favor a diagnosis of cluster headache but care must be taken to counter check whatever ready-made past diagnosis are being given by the patient because he or she may be using the medical terms loosely in an example patient gave a history of past history of chest pain so it was suggestive of angina but on further questioning it was found out that angina was a diagnosis which was just made by a friend whereas it looked like that he just pulled a chest muscle while lifting heavy weights so what will you ask in past history ask any similar illness in the past any illness that comes to your mind while you're taking the history any history of hospitalization if yes then the reason and the treatment given at that time any history of surgery any other major illness any history of chronic diseases like diabetes mellitus hypertension coronary heart disease tuberculosis etc whatever is relevant in your area an example real-time example is given below a patient was operated for hernia and the surgeon placed a mesh after that. Unfortunately, a past history of partially treated abdominal tuberculosis was missed. Now, this surgery was done when the patient was actually having an active abdominal tuberculosis and this caused complications, caused perforation, peritonitis and finally the patient expired. An accurate treatment history can be helpful in many ways. The response to a medication taken can help in making the current diagnosis. For example, a patient with ascites reported complete resolution with diuretics. So this made the physician think that the ascites is a transudative one and the entire workup went towards the diagnosis of a transudative ascites, the disorders that got transudative ascites. Then, if the patient has not responded to one line of treatment, the need to consider an alternative and not to just repeat what has already been tried and failed. The presenting complaint itself may be a side effect of the medicine and the patient has forgotten to mention the medicine as he could not relate the present complaint with it. 
so especially asking for medication could promptly clinch the diagnosis that this is a side effect of the medication sometimes medications may be masking masking the symptoms that you are expecting to be present while analyzing the history while analyzing your differential diagnosis for example a person on beta blocker may not have the classic symptoms of hypoglycemia hence the symptoms being absent you can be explained that the person is on beta blocker and to avoid duplication of prescription therefore it is important that you should obtain not only the list of prescribed drugs but also other drugs like over the counter drugs psychotropic drugs and also ascertain whether the patient has been compliant with the prescribed drugs in addition you can ask for other modes of treatment like surgery cesarean section etc under family history ask the family composition of the patient history of similar complaints in the family members may point towards a hereditary origin of the condition or a risk factor present in the environment of the house of the patient also ask for family history of the diseases that come to your mind as a part of differential diagnosis because presence of any one of these increases the likelihood of the same disease being present in the patient also any deaths in the family and causes for them any history of hereditary disease in the family and history of consanguineous marriage in the family ask for the history of chronic disease in any family member chronic disease like hypertension diabetes mellitus tuberculosis or whichever may be important in the area that you practice try to assess any reason for stress in the family for example headaches in a school child may actually be arising from anxiety due to parental discord occupational history is also important in arriving at a diagnosis because forming a diagnosis may be linked to occupation for example a case of infertility in a man may be due to exposure to higher temperatures for example while working in blast furnace factory or brick factory etc a suspected occupational link may actually clinch the diagnosis for example psittacosis pneumonia in those who are handling birds the patient may be unfit for the current occupation due to his condition certain protective measures may be advised in the current job for stopping the progression for the progression of the disease the occupation can also indicate the socioeconomic status of the patient because that also has a bearing while forming the differential diagnosis so if the occupational history is not complete an occupational disease may be missed and may be assigned to to other causes so an effort should be made to ask about the job and past occupation and also the type of work executed at the job under dietary history assess the pattern of dietary intake if the person is vegetarian or non vegetarian um frequency of eating non vegetarian in a week amount of fruit and vegetable in daily diet any special diet due to any reason you can also ask about the raw materials used at home like which oil or fat is used how much salt is being used if you are suspecting the disease to be in nutritional origin for example iron deficiency anemia or thiamine deficiency in neurological symptoms a detailed history can be taken so that the daily intake of iron or thiamine may be assessed in special cases like an under 5 child or a pregnant female it is very important to assess the total dietary intake in last 24 hours this can be done by 24 hour recall method and one can assess the amount of calories protein and iron extra it taken in previous 24 hours 
the findings of the 24 hour recall method can be presented as the percent deficit or excess of the recommended daily amount. Under personal history, ask about history of smoking and assess the number of cigarettes smoked in a day and the duration of smoking habit. Also ask about the history of consumption of other forms of tobacco. Ask about alcohol consumption and try to assess the amount and frequency of alcohol consumption. Ask cage questions and if the person turns out to be a heavy drinker, you can advise him. Ask about urinary and bowel habits, if they are regular, if there is any recent change in them. The living conditions may be assessed because the disease may be linked with the living conditions. In case of an elderly or dependent person, it may be important in the management of the case. For example, if it is an elderly lady with a hip fracture, it is important to know if she lives alone or she has a caretaker or she has some kind of support services or how suitable her house is. If the patient is a female, take the menstrual history, ask the age at menarche, the regularity of cycles, duration of each cycle and the number of days of bleeding. Try to assess the amount of blood loss in each menstrual cycle and finally ask the date of last menstrual period. You may even need to rule out pregnancy as a cause of symptoms or as per the treatment. If the female is postmenopausal, also ask about the age of attainment of menopause, any postmenopausal bleeding and menopausal symptoms. This you can ask even those who, are, who have yet not achieved the menopause. Under obstetrics history, ask about the number of pregnancies, the total number of deliveries, the mode of these deliveries and the place of these deliveries that is home delivery or hospital delivery any abortion, whether they were spontaneous or induced and the reason for induction, the number of living children she has, their ages and the age of the youngest child, any history of antenatal problems like eclampsia, gestational diabetes, intranatal or postnatal complications like prolonged labor, hemorrhage, Like we talked about a female patient and additional categories may be required to be covered in other cases. These have been covered in separate blogs and lectures. For example, an under 5 child. In addition to the previous history, you, can, you have to ask about the birth history, feeding history, immunization history and development history. Other examples of special cases are a geriatric patient, a psychiatric patient, etc. If the history has been taken with thorough attention and in full detail, a diagnosis can be reached upon on the basis of history itself. Analyzing the history is similar to working of a detective, identifying the pattern of symptoms, their evolution can indicate some reasons for them and asking associate symptoms can further narrow down the reasons responsible for the which can explain the patient's symptoms and indicate which organ is involved. This analytical capability improves with medical knowledge and clinical experience but some principles can be understood at the starting stage itself. The type of pathology at least can be recognized even by the beginners. Taking a meaningful history actually involves Asking common sense questions based upon your knowledge can delineate the nature of the disorder if not diagnosis per se and can suggest the most likely pathophysiology even if the diagnosis cannot be made at this stage. 
because it does not take extensive and profound knowledge of medical facts for guessing what is the type of pathology and which organ system may be involved. A rapid onset and progression over hours may suggest infective pathology or allergic pathology. So you can ask about the symptoms which can be localizing symptoms for the pathology. A history of repeated episodes of similar symptoms may point towards the allergic rather than infective. A gradual onset with steady progression may point towards a metabolic disease or malignant disease or a particular chronic disease. You can ask about the associated symptoms of progressive weight loss, fatigue, old age and this points the pathology towards malignant one. Sudden onset with rapid progression may indicate a vascular accident. So the logic about which questions need to be asked to rule out or consider certain illnesses will grow as you continue to acquire understanding of pathophysiology and more medical knowledge. The detailed analysis at your stage can then be done by a senior if you have taken a thorough history and can be defined further on clinical examination and carefully chosen investigations. This slide shows you the questions pertaining to each body system which you can ask in the as a beginner so as not to rule out any associated symptoms.